G'day, beard brethren, shillers, fuckheads, and just all around legends. Boy, have we got a treat for you today. It's going to be a good one. I'm your host, Rousey. Uh, that is Adrian. We have two beards, a podcast, and Wrexham AFC, the podcast all about Wrexham, brought to you from just your two lovely Aussie bearded blokes. Adrian, how are you going, mate? But I'm pretty good. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty soaked. Um, we'll get into why. But Jesus, uh, what a, it's been a a weird and wonderful week. Games cancelled. You know, w- women getting through to the semi-finals. Ah, uh, geez, it's just all happening. But to be honest, nothing really tops what's about to happen. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So we're actually not going to do a long intro. We're going to get straight into this episode as quick as we can. But first, Ooh. guys, like, share, subscribe the shit out of this. If you want to become a fuckhead, which is our patron fan only program, then uh, by all means, link will be in the description down below. It will cost you $5 a month, gets you shout outs, gets you merch, 10% off our merch, gets you um, giveaways in in the fuckhead chat and um, loads of other extras as well as a shout out every week from... Adrian. Us. Oh, hey. <laughs> God, look, uh, to be honest, guys, this is just like, crazy crazy times in the in the chat um when we're having a good time we're getting to that holiday season just massive shout out thank you you know sarah jake will ryan aaron chris uh and obviously rousey because i can't forget that bloke um it has just been an epic epic year and i'm looking forward to the next couple episodes that we have since store because it just doesn't get any better (laughs) doesn't get much better than this we got some big ones starting today. And then obviously Adrian will be away in Japan, lovely Japan, um, having a bit of a holiday over Christmas. So this will be our last recorded episode before Christmas. You will still have two episodes coming up though. Oh, so okay. So okay. um, But today we have a special Christmas present for Adrian. None other than the lad of all lads, Tommy Kaus coming on the pod. Let's go. <laughs> right. It is so it's honestly the best, the best surprise. The, the guys, just for context, I, I I know he's just a bloke, he's just a man, but he's the man. And I, I love this guy. And um, you know, looked up to this bloke because his journalism, just his just openness about mental health, things like that. Just a great all-round bloke. And I he was I wasn't I didn't know. <laughs> This was happening. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit like all energy. Um, and that's just because uh, Mr. Rousey surprised me today uh, with this amazing guest. So I'm pretty <laughs> stoked. <laughs> yes. Merry Christmas. This will be a good one. So you know what? Let's uh, let's just take it away. After this, we bring you the one, the only, Tommy a motherfucking cows. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we are, Mr. Tommy Kaus, the man in blazer himself. <laughs> Welcome to Two Beards, mate. I, I got to start this by saying, did you ever think five years ago that you'd be a Christmas present to a bearded ginger bald Aussie? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, maybe in some sort of uh, really, really weird dream. Uh, but, um, but yeah, no, I never thought in a million years it's, um, you know, I, I still feel, I feel bad for you, mate. If that's your Christmas <laughs> present, <laughs> but no, listen, absolutely, uh, delighted that you boys have asked me to come on. And, uh, yeah, as I say, it's, it's great with what's going on around the world now. You know, you guys in Australia, uh, America, Canada, fantastic to see so much support for the Reds coming from all over the world. Oh, I'm lucky, that, that... Eh? Like, the Wrexham content just, is definitely alive on YouTube. That's for sure. Oh, it's crazy at the moment. Like, it's great though. Like, you know, you've got everyone and I love that it's not, well, I mean, from, from our end, it's not, it's not competitive. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone's just supportive of each other and it's just, it's bloody brilliant. Like to see that. Um, and just for context for people who are like, what do you mean? He was a Christmas present for a bald ginger. Uh, this was a surprise. I'm a big fan of uh, Mr. Tommy here and, um, you know, Re- re- reading all of his like you know um, publications doing journalism but also um just 
his, you know, Twitter account, you know, whatever, probably stalked him, um, probably since the, the beginning of pre, you know, National League TV days in terms of, um, you know, trying to get Rex some content. So uh, that's what he means. He surprised me today and here he is. So pretty, pretty happy about that. But, mate, what do you think out of everything that's happened, what other, I mean, probably this is the weirdest, but what's the weirdest thing that's happened since the takeover that's just floored you? I mean, the one I just wanted to start by saying thank you so much for that, mate. I'm generally I'm well enough here. I feel emotional after what you just <laughs> said about the journalism and stuff there. But uh, no, listen, top man for that. Uh, I think the weirdest thing, and I've said this to a few people, including Wayne himself, um, being over in Philadelphia and seeing uh, like a massive crowd of about a hundred people queuing up to get Wayne Jones from the Turf's autograph. I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous. I was like, what is going on? This everyone's gone crazy, uh, and that's nothing against Wayne. I'm a good mate of Wayne, no. but um, yeah, you know, it's well, um, I mean, I'm the odd it, one out here because uh, I know Adrian's popped up in the doco, you've you've been oh. in the doco, <laughs> so I'm I'm like the only one. <laughs> so, Disney producers, I, I was just gonna say, if, if that isn't a come and get me plea, I don't know what is. To yeah, honest, exactly, yeah. exactly. I, he's, it's funny when it when it happened, um, because I told him, I said, Look, I sent a lot of footage through, um, you know, talking with Josh and like, you know, got a got a few like videos out there. And I, what I mean is, like, I'm talking like cloud storage, <laughs> like, his amount. And um, I got my little two seconds of fame and I made 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 up like I think it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Told my wife that she's, you know, whatever about it. But like, you know, it's it's good. But like poor but Rousey was so supportive at the time. But as time's gone on, I've just noticed more and more of a push for him to be on be on it. So we'll we'll try and get him on next season, I reckon. <laughs> oh, no. Let's let's make this happen. I'm I'm willing to help start the campaign right here, right now, lads. So, uh, yeah, get a get a get change dot org petition going. That's it. <laughs> so, men and blazers. Um, a lot of so for uh, Aussie listeners or international listeners that might not understand, men and blazers is a Premier League only channel. Yet somehow they've picked up Wrexham and. Your boy Tommy here is the man for Wrexham on Men in Blaze. How did that come up? Well, how? Like, uh, that is massive. For them to be a, a Premier League only channel and yet now they're covering Wrexham. How did that come about? Well, I, to be honest, I just saw an advert. Um, you know, they, they wanted a, um, uh, a complete clown, a drunken clown. So I answered the advert and it turns out I was overqualified as well. So, uh, but no, it's, um, <laughs> it, it was honestly, it's been, it's been incredible. And uh, I, I got to tell you lads, uh, the men in blazers lads are absolutely fantastic. They've been brilliant. They've been so helpful so far and, you know, I'm sure that'll continue. I love it to be honest. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I loved my time with, um, you know, North Wales live and stuff like that. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know if that was sort of may, maybe, you know, I, I I enjoyed it, as I say, but I don't know, maybe this sort of thing probably suits me a little bit better. Um, so well, I've got to say, your vlogs oh, are, shit, your <laughs> vlogs, your, your vlogs, sponsored by Stoke Cold Brew, <laughs> got, <laughs> got to add that. your vlogs are fucking phenomenal. Like, I, I've gotten into watching them and I, I can't wait for them to come out, watch them every single time because they are, they are they're class. They're straight class. Yeah. So yeah. hats off to you for that because fuck me, dude. Um, you do a good job. <laughs> Such mate, a good that's job. really kind of you. Lads, I can't thank you enough for that. Genuinely, it's really nice to hear that. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, hopefully, you know, the, the one thing, obviously, I suppose the main goal is try to, uh, you know, uh, get a bigger audience over in the States and worldwide and stuff like that. But it's really important. And we've, we speak about this in the meetings every week that, you know, that people from Wrexham or, or Wrexham fans, you know, really buy into it as well. So so hopefully um, it'll appeal to everyone, really. Uh, but yeah, no, that means the world, lads. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> well, you couldn't have picked a better bloke for it because I was telling I was telling Rousey um, like when I was like pitching the idea, I was like, we should get Tommy on. We've been wanting this for a while. I feel like we're, we're building up a big enough following. We, we should just ask the, pop the question, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, and I was just saying like, you know, you've, 
your mates with people we know, you know, your your mates with people like in every kind of group of, of wrecks and people we know, like in terms of, you know, all walks of life. And I just feel like it works really well because if you're wanting wrecks and people to buy into it, why not get one of one of our, one of their own, you know? So I feel like they've done that really well. And in terms of since you've done this, what's the change been like? Because obviously it is still it's a form of journalism. It's still um, you know, doing that. How was the change for you? Was it easier? Was it harder? What was what was the change like? I've got to be honest. It was a real eye opener um, in terms of the the amount of work that goes in. Uh, we do a uh, you know the videos are usually around six or seven minutes, um, but um, you know you're talking hours of filming just to get <laughs> the, the sort of footage, just to get the right stuff to to put in a seven minute video. So it was a real eye opener. I didn't realize it'd be as much hard work. <laughs> it's not. It's not hard work. I'm, I'm talking rubbish there. It's not hard work, but it's it's really enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, it, it's quite a long day though. Um, but I really can't complain. I, I, I'm so, so lucky to be doing it. And, um, you know, I'm sure uh, a few other people would love to do it. So I, I really, I'm really, really grateful. Um, but yeah, like, like I say, it's really going well at the moment. Um, you know, I think the thing is now uh, for us to get another season of it, hopefully Rex can get promotion. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's, that's what's right. going to push it, I think. It's going to make it even, I'm even greater. Saying, I'm still saying back to back. I He's mean, still come saying on. it. The, the the fact the fact that we dropped a game on the weekend, which we'll get into. <laughs> we dropped a game on the weekend, yet we're still fucking second. Like, yeah, <laughs> God, yeah. We we. I Could mean, got better. You, they say where you get up to Christmas is where a sort of a good indication of where the league will most likely finish. I, I, I'm I'm telling you now, it's going to be Stockport Rex and for the rest of the bloody season, and then yeah. Not so falling off. <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon? Not so falling apart. Actually, do you reckon? Not, Luke not, not, not so falling apart yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we sing that pretty much every week now. Um, it's like, it's it's just great. But but like honestly, it is it is something that I'm starting to believe more. At the start of the season, we did a prediction on the pod where. You know, we talked about where we think we'll end up, and, and Rousey confidently said back to back as champions. I think we'll go back to back promotion. I'm just thinking. I thought at the time Stockport were building a pretty handy gap, um, but that seems to have been diminished a little bit now. So there seems to be a bit more on the line in the next couple of games. What? Well, where do you think where we're currently at? Would you think we'd sit at the end of the season? I agree with you, mate. I've got to say, I don't think... I I mean, I certainly wouldn't bet against us winning the league. Um, yeah. I, I do think we'd probably just fall, fall short of winning the league, though. That's my opinion. Um, mm. I think we are good enough to get automatic, though. I really do. Uh, especially, you know, as you, you two lads just said then, um, teams are dropping points left, right and centre. And, you know, it's a shame we didn't play on Saturday. We could have cap- capitalised on that so much, couldn't we? But... Um, but no, yeah. I, I'm really confident. I am. I've, I've been confident since the start of the season, even after that MK Dons game. You sort of look at that first game against MK Dons, and you know they they put every chance they had away. Uh, and mm. we we were we went into the season undercooked anyway, uh, yeah. with you know pre season. So um, yeah, I'm really really confident. And I think um, you know I'm a little bit out the loop now. I haven't spoken to Parky for a few weeks now, but I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he'll want to bring in. One or two, I mean, one definitely. Surely, uh, you know, uh, we'll we'll definitely got one nailed on. But yeah, hopefully, maybe one or two more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden, I mean, Christ, I mean, that squad is really strong anyway. But just a little bit more competition for places, and we, we'll be absolutely flying. Do, I do, do you think reckon... I've got to win it, though. To be honest, do, yeah, I'm with you. Do you reckon Luke Young will end up going to knots? Because this is a rumor that's just been flying around Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of stuff that Luke Young will be off to Notts County at the end of the season or in the January window. Now, I'm going to preface by saying I actually like that move because for some, for whatever reason, he can't make the team, and he's the type of guy that needs to be playing. And if he was to go to any team, I'd think I'd rather it be Notts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what what do you think about that? Do you do you think that that has legs to it, or or I mean, 
don't know if you know too much about the inner workings of what's going on there, but do you think that that's a huge possibility? And and what do you think of the move if that was to happen? I mean, I don't know much about the inner workings of my own house, so uh, I definitely don't know anything about Notts County. But uh, <laughs> but no, I uh, I do. Do you know what I've got to tell you? I, and um, you know, I've, I've spoken to him a few times and things like that. Luke Young is an absolute top guy. Absolute legend. He loves this club as well. And I'll be really, really sorry to see him go. But at the same time, um, it's not really satisfactory for anyone, him sitting on the on the bench and, and not playing. Uh, he's too good for that. I really, really rate him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if he goes to Knott's, absolute best of luck to him. And, and, you know, whoever he comes back to the race course with, uh, he'll be getting a really, really good reception, I'm sure. So, um, unless it's Chester or Shrewsbury, and then uh, he can fuck off. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Knotts, Knotts might need him to help arrest the uh, the slip that they've been going through lately because after that Shrewsbury debacle and then uh, then on the weekend as well, uh, which they dropped again, it's just like, it's just, you, you didn't see it happening because they're on five for the first part of the season and, you know, top of the league in some instances and thought, oh yeah, it's going to be Knotts and Stockport, but now it's us and Stockport. Um, yeah. so they're falling off, but then you know, obviously, then you can't predict this league because Morecambe, who we absolutely smashed, <laughs> ended up drawing against Stockport. Yeah, uh, it's like it, it, it is, it's crazy, it, it really is a crazy league, league two. But, um, I, I think this is what it's going to be like, though. I think that the team that can put a good 15 to 20 games together, uh, which we're more, more than capable of. Uh, I think we'll we'll end up winning the league and getting promotion. So um, yeah, I, I mean it's, it's entertaining, isn't it? I mean, like you say, you know, there's quality all the way down to the bottom of the league, isn't it? Like you know mm. that game against Harrogate uh, the other week, uh, I was quite impressed with them. To be fair, I mean, I thought we were really poor, uh, but you know they they were a half decent side, and you know they're lower lower half of the table, and so yeah, I, I think we we are going to drop. Uh, a fair few points between now and the end of the season, but so will the other teams. So I think it's all about mm. just trying to get that consistency. As I say, get a couple of lads, fresh faces in in January, um, and you know we'll be we'll be right up there, absolute guaranteed. Fuck yeah, I love that. Fuck yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 funny because you're talking about. Um, faces uh i'm just going into a really shitty segue of a conquo's injury of, of his jaw but he's someone that obviously has been super important for this this it run of form and obviously not ideal what he's gone through and what he's going through at the moment he's gone back to arsenal to um get the treatment that he needs and get that top quality um hopefully fix and be back as soon as possible i don't see him coming back this side of the new year. Um, But do you think once that January window opens, obviously he's kind of a free man. What do we do there? Do you think we look, we go for it straight away? Does it help our case that he might be be injured? Is that help with the case? Or do you think it doesn't really affect it? We'll still have to pay pretty top dollar to kind of um, sign a free agent. I think it's a really good question, mate, to be fair. I, I think um, I wouldn't have thought it would affect any sort of um, fee. Uh, I wouldn't have thought uh, the fact that he's injured. I, I agree with you. I don't think we'll see him before New Year. Um, as someone who's suffered a broken jaw before playing football, it's, you know, it, it is, it, well, it's, it was like five weeks before I could eat solid food. So, you know, he's not, not going to be playing any football. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was basically living off uh, KFC gravy for a month when, uh, when I did my <laughs> Hey, that's not bad. That's not a bad. I was going to say, I think I lived off that in general, but (laughs) (laughs) it was it was a great month. That to be fair, yeah, yeah. yeah, But um, for me, uh, and you guys have seen it as well with watching the games and what have you. He's um, he is an outstanding keeper. I think he's one of the sorts of guys we need to not not break the bank that's a silly term but let's you know just pay that little bit extra secure his signing because we can we can see can't you every time he comes mm. on the field he's outstanding he's a, he's a championship level goalkeeper already i think i think he's yeah. going to be a tough one to keep like if, if yeah if, the track at least well not so much that like, even when when his contract expires at arsenal um I just I get the feeling you're going to have a lot of European clubs coming after him, 
maybe even some some clubs out of the championship. Um, you know, maybe even Manchester United because let's face it, Anana's shit. Um, <laughs> but it, but it's funny that you say that because like it is a it is a point because Rex there are benefits and there are downfalls of being Wrexham right now. Yes, every eye is on us, but every eye is on us. That includes other clubs, that includes other scouts, and that includes, you know, the the clubs that that we don't want them him to go to, but we can't really compete with in terms of money. I, I would imagine personally, we do sign him, we get him, because he's comfortable, he's you know, he's hit some good form. He hasn't played he still hasn't played that much. He's only played this like this run of games for us. So if I was him, I'd stick around play that full season, finish it off, go up, then renegotiate. And if we can get a bit of extra dollar for him, because that might be the case, great. But if he can climb the leagues with us, I would prefer that every day of the week. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said, mate, to be fair. Um, You know, I think as well, because he's so young, uh, you talk about climbing the leagues there. That's absolutely what we should be looking at. We, We don't, you know, we don't want to be in a situation where, because I, I personally think this summer uh, there'll be a little bit of a, a, there'll be a mini clear out, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you had to be on their way, I think. Um, but, um, but yeah, ideally you don't want a big turnover in the summer, every summer. So if you can get good young lads who can climb the leagues and develop with us, I mean, a Conquo just fits that bill perfectly, doesn't he? So, uh, yeah, for me, it's a no-brainer. I think, um, you know, it's worth paying that extra little bit just to secure a signing like that. Um, you know, obviously, the only thing left to discuss then is whether a Conquo wants to come to us. He'll have offers, like you said before. Mm. Um, you know, he's played in Switzerland, doesn't he? Uh, he will have offers from elsewhere. So, you know, there might be a bit of competition. But for me, if, if, we, if we've got any sniff of signing, get him signed because he is outstanding. Mm. Yeah, so I absolutely agree with that. I, I wasn't sure about him at first because I never actually heard much about him. But then, um, and I was a big, you know, big backer of Chomp. Um, but then when I saw saw him really, you know, it took him one or two games to find his feet. But my gosh, having his presence there and just his, how tall he is as well. Some of those shots you see of him. I mean, how Chomp calm is, is he, great, by the way? But, oh. How calm is he? I don't think I've ever seen him upset. Like, you know, you know when you see a keeper and they're shouting, like Foster last year was shouting a lot and Chomp can sometimes do it. He's like, you know, being a general, do this, do that. He's just chill. He's just like the most relaxed bloke I've ever seen. And I, I love it. It's it's a fre- breath of fresh air because I'm. you watch any league uh, upwards or even our league, watch the goalkeepers and watch what they're doing and they're barking orders from the back. He's not doing that. And I thought that could be a, bad thing because you know that involves a bit of leadership that involves a bit more you know control but he doesn't need it <laughs> he, he it's almost like he can just read the play without having to bark the orders <laughs> yeah i would love yeah. to smoke a joint with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair. there we go fantastic <laughs> let's get it let's get it sorted i'll um i'll book a hotel in wrexham and then fly <laughs> you two boys over and we'll, we'll do it <laughs> we'll do it. I am I am literally with saying to Rousey that if when we get to Wrexham, it will be the last time because we will be banned. And it will be because of it'll be because of I reckon it'll be because of Rousey. I've always said it's gonna be because of Rousey. You know, we've talked about, you know, um, you know, if we you know, we people do, you know, things like obviously, you know, as well as anyone, you know, there's, you know, the Fearless Boys are doing incredible work, doing live shows, Sean Winter doing similar things. Awesome. I'm like, I want to be different, you know. And Rousey's idea of different is like a slip and slide in front of the race course and he just does it completely nude. And I'm like, I don't know if that's going to draw as much a crowd, you know, like. <laughs> I don't know. That that has got all the makings to be hilarious. So, well, if, yeah, if people can out. pay $9.99 a month on OnlyFans, I'm sure <laughs> they would like to come see me slide down, slip and slide completely nude for free. For free. <laughs> 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 Absolutely fantastic. I, I, I'm gonna um I'm gonna if I've still got contacts within the club, I'm gonna make this happen, boys. Let's <laughs> I love it. And that, that it's so funny because like we uh, I talk about the communities and we you know we we're not we don't shy away from you know the other pods because they're incredible work, they do incredible work, and you obviously appeared on many of them quite frequently, um, if that, and they're all just top-notch blokes. 
what I love about it all is, yeah, the camaraderie, what they were able to do, um, you know, since pre-takeover with Fearless and, and even post-takeover with what, what um, the others are doing as well. When you were doing, you know, your, when you were doing more of the journalistic side of things, say a couple of years ago, what was the, what was, I guess, the form of news? What were people gravitating towards a couple of years ago? Because obviously the international fans have obviously adopted Mark Griffiths as, his own, as their own. <laughs> um, you know, we love Mark, great bloke. Um, but that's because, you know, he's been the easy access. What was, I guess, the main point of call, I guess, other than the telecast? Well, to be honest, I've got to, uh, you know, even though uh, we used to joke that we were rivals, but uh, Rich from the leader, uh, the Wrexham leader, he he does an absolutely outstanding job and he has done for years. Uh, and he's been, you know, he's been the local journalist for the Wrexham leader, I think, since 2003, 2004-ish. Wow. So he's been there long before the takeover. And I've got to say his his stuff is outstanding, really is. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very lucky now, aren't we? Um, you know, with, you've got uh, Rich Sutcliffe from The Athletic as well. He, he does an yep. absolutely awesome job. Yeah, prior to that, though, I don't know. To be honest, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of mis- misinformation, a bit like Twitter, really. But you'd have <laughs> um, you know, Wrexham fans chat on Facebook and stuff like that. And, you know, people like put a rumour about, I think there was a rumour once about Sol Campbell, like coming as manager and stuff like that. It's just, you know, it's come out of nowhere. It's random shit. Up, yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's, it was um, it was difficult then. I mean, we're we're so spoiled now compared to you know two three years ago. But then I don't think we were any different to most national league clubs in that mm. uh, right to the takeover. It's just that it's gone into a different stratosphere now, hasn't it? So yeah, you know, it all has these, it definitely all has. these all these media outlets just see the value, don't they? They see the value <laughs> in doing it because it's going to get them clicks. So exactly, the the and game. I think I think that's probably part of the reason you know why we're able to attract players from higher leagues. Um, you know, and I, I keep saying just on 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 rumors and things like that. I keep saying to to Adrian and that said, wait until it's announced by the club, till they're there in a Wrexham shirt, unless you're Luke Armstrong. Um, don't believe it until that, it's announced by the club. You know, and, and like, I know there's a, a, a thing going around at the moment against um, Saito Khan. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. Why, when we can get players from higher leagues, why are we trying to go after someone in League 2? But, but <laughs> it, it, like, if you were to say to me, what, like, to a League 1 equivalent, for example, let's say the Lex League up, someone was looking at our boys, people would say the same thing. Why are you looking at League 2? It's like, but we've got the likes of Elliot Lee, we've got the likes of Paul Mullen, things like that, you know, who, who are obviously outside of that league. So I'm guessing he's in that that category as well, um, where he maybe shouldn't be in this league and maybe we should capitalise when we can. But Luke Armstrong, if that fax machine has not been thrown out uh, or whatever it was that that stopped that deal from going through, that poor bastard, you know, it, the, I think what if I was anyone in Wrexham this year and, you know, you, everyone talks about what's a hard job to do. If I'm the media ex-Twitter person, I don't know if Matt does it. I don't know who's running it at the moment, but whoever had to deal with the backlash that happened when we didn't sign Luke Armstrong, holy shit, I'm so sorry. That poor bastard had it worse out of everyone this year. <laughs> that was a horrendous night. I remember it was it was the night before Tramir away, wasn't it? And, yep. um, yeah, I was in a pub in, uh, in Rill, uh, of all places, and um, I... Uh, I, t- I sort of had uh, a tip off from someone with, within the club, basically, because uh, I'm still journalist at the time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all done. We're going to announce it in quarter of an hour. So I put it out on my feed and then like started writing up the story and all that. And then next thing, oh, something's happened here. It got to like midnight. What's going on here, boys? And, uh, and I was, I was you know, panicking a little bit then. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was a mad night, that one. Uh, mm. I, I've never understood why clubs leave it so late anyway it's just it just seems like daft and necessary but yeah there you go the uh, suspense the suspense i think you know maybe yeah. we sucked into the drama of it all <laughs> I, think, I think maybe they, they'll uh, dedicate an entire episode to that in the third oh, season of the documentary for sure. so yeah oh they it'll be they have to <laughs> and their fax machine will be the main star. Like, it'll be whatever it was that they tried to put through that they're like, oh, sorry, it didn't go through. It's like, fuck off. Like, what are you using that's not email, a phone call? How hard is it 
but I, 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 I get there's a lot of moving parts as well. And there's, you know, I know I felt Harrogate probably out of everyone ended up being better off now we think about it but at the time they were shitting bricks because they'd spent the money already (laughs) and got another player in in the slot they were like great awesome and then they're like shit we've still got him what do we do um but now but i wouldn't be surprised like i've 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 been hearing i mean you again you will know more than than us but i'm hearing that we're still probably going to go for him again it'll be like um i don't know if um, i'm a I follow a, a lot of Celtic, um, and I don't know if you remember the um, the Turnbull um, uh, situation where basically was it with Motherwell, and he he was meant to sign, and then they had him in a shirt. They took a photo with him with the shirt, posted it up, and then it didn't go through. And I just think it'll be the same thing. It'll just next window. Is that is that your vibe as well? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I've heard. I've I haven't uh, heard anything concrete. Uh, I've got to be honest, but but yeah, that's that's pretty much the info I've been told. But um, yeah, I, I must admit, I you know I I don't know what to think about the signing, but I I always think that there's been over the years Wrexham have signed uh, you know players who have come with massive reputations. Uh, Ian Rush is the one that springs to mind, and and just have not performed in a red shirt. Whereas some of our best signings ever have been like low-key signings who've just come yep. in and just clicked, fitted in straight away. So I tend not to, you know, I think it's best to, you know, the people who know what they're doing, uh, you know, trust their judgment. Parky's very, very good in the transfer market, isn't he? Um, mm. You know, he doesn't get any wrong. So, um, so yeah, I, I you know, I, I, it'd just be good to get another body up front. I've got to say, I've said it um, elsewhere as well, uh, I think Becker's staff deserves more of a go. Um, For sure. I, I think, I think he's a brilliant player, really good young player. I think he's got potential to go much higher. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that he doesn't get more of a run out, but you know, Parky got to trust in Parky. Parky goes for experience, doesn't he? Quite a lot. Mm. And, I mean, um, and, and, and how old is he? How old is Bickers now? There's two teams, um, within Wrexham that obviously the first 11 and then the backups, <laughs> the backups are still, you know, probably better than most of the league. Anyway, so it's like you got, you got so much depth there that it's it's impossible to pick, and mm. it's good that it's just you know next man in does their job, and and that's what team he's 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 developed, um, because it is it's 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 such quality even coming off the bench, um, it, it's hard to mistake that. But uh, got to ask, uh. Local hangouts in Wrexham. Are you more of a, a turf, my squin, maybe fat boar? Like, what, what's what's your take? If you're going to ask him to publicly make an allegiance here and fucking alienate <laughs> himself from half of Wrexham, you've just <laughs> fucked that up. <laughs> well, well, this, this leads into my next question. So I just got to know, what's, what's your favourite hangout and what's your favourite pub meal? Right. Well, to be honest, I, I literally was going to sit on the fence and say all of the above. Because I do love all those places that you mentioned. Hill Street as well. I don't know if you mentioned that one. That's a, that's another cracking boozer. Um, I do like, on a match day, I do like going to the turf. Uh, there's something special about it. It's it's mainly because it's the pub I've always gone to ever since I started going, you know, as a youngster. Was, you know, my my, uh, my grandfather would sort of buy me a pint when I was like 13. Uh, I hope he doesn't get arrested now for that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, like that's that's just, it's it's a nostalgic thing. And it's mm. extra special now with the with the great atmosphere around the club. My squin is excellent as well. I've got to say, I've been yes. there a couple of times recently. Um, you know, I, I know Rich, the uh, the owner there, has uh, given me a bit of stick for the uh, the, the spicy kebab, kebab that he, uh, they sticks me up with. But uh, yeah, <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> my squin is it's brilliant. Right that, no, like, so- I, I know, I know he's going to go into it, and I know you've got a next question lead up. But how spicy was it? I just got to know. I just because the, the the Twitter, everyone's like, you know, babies were eating it, and like, you know, shit like that. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what my forte is, but acting certainly isn't it. So you know, <laughs> it's, honestly, it was just so hot. But everyone was saying they're not hot. What are you going on about? But I suspect the uh, the chef he, he put like an extra chili in there or something. I don't know, but it was really yeah. really hot. And it's um, twice as it's always twice as hot coming out that it is going in. <laughs> oh, yeah, Christ, that's, fair. What a great thought that is, Christ. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so, so this leads me to my next question: Were you by any chance on your way to the vegan stadium on the weekend? 
The Vegan Stadium. Vegan Stadium, yeah. Is that they renamed it again? Have they? Yeah, yeah. I um, <laughs> yeah, we were do you know what? We we weren't far away either. We were sort of uh, Gloucestershire. I think we were probably less than an hour away. Um and uh, yeah, it was really disappointing. We we just didn't even consider for, for one minute that the game would be called off when we when we set off in the morning. Um, you know, there'd been a lot of rain and stuff like that, and there was a few other games called off. Um, but yeah, right. honestly, it was just came as a massive shock. Well, so the first saved shock yourself, came... you saved yourself some avocado on toast and <laughs> yeah, shit, <laughs> and then some fucking. Yeah. Tofu burgers or some bullshit. <laughs> well, I, I, stocked, I stocked up on the old Greg's uh, pasties on my way down before uh, before it was called off. So, yeah, I was getting my uh, my quota in. No, but yeah, in the end, what we did was, um, you know, we, we were sort of down that way anyway. We decided to go and watch Bath City uh, against Boreham Wood. Uh, and, oh, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a really, really good laugh. It was a good day, actually. Um, so it was like five of us, you know, wearing Wrexham hats and stuff. People looking at us, what the fuck are they doing? But uh, you know, it was it was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it, it was a real shame though. Like like we were saying before, lads. Um, you know, to capitalise on some of the other results that had happened at the top of League Two, it would have been great to get that game on. But it is what it is. I mean, we've got the squad to cope with. Uh, you know, a busy run of fixtures. So I think we'll be never, all good. You never know. I mean, they might they might just come back and you know come back really fresh because they've had you know an extra week off come back really fresh it gives those players injured chance to recover and and, and get ready to or come it's back a strong. fucking nightmare <laughs> and it's like stockport all over again and that that shit gets still gives me nightmares um but you are you you make a good point though we got players who can come back from injury get well get back into that side fletcher's one i wanted to touch on for just a moment because he is obviously under that injury cloud still, I think, but that gives him that extra bit of time to to rest. Fletcher, for me, has been one of the signings of the season for a lot of reasons that a lot of people, I know a lot of people like, oh, you know, it's, you know, the oh, I bring him on at the last minute. He, you know, he gets gets what you need, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's, it's what he's bringing to Parky's no, what is it, no dickhead policy that he's got, but which is basically... Everyone he walks in is sound. Like, you know, you see him and McLean having absolute oh, banter. Shit, I got no hope. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mate. Your Wrexham days were, were done the minute that Parky stepped through the door. Uh, <laughs> but but it is that point, right? Like, if of he's, I don't know. I Maybe I'm just reading into it. Maybe it's just because he looks like a Viking and I'm, you know, fallen for the bloke. I don't know. But he, he's, he's just got this aura about him. Who's been your, I guess, breakout person for this season, um, whether it's a, a new signing, whether it's someone who's existing? Who's been someone that's just stood out for you? Yeah, I just start by saying I agree with everything you say about Fletcher. I think he, he just shows his quality every time he comes on. Uh, if you need a goal, get Fletch on. If you need someone to hold the ball up and run the ball in the corner, get Fletch on. He's so useful. Uh, so I said straight away when we signed him, I thought that that, that is a really, really good signing. The question mark is, uh, and I, I suspect he won't be able to play, uh, you know, he won't be able to start regularly, I don't think. Uh, no. But yeah, just in terms of, um, yeah, breakout players, um, and yeah, not so much a breakout player, but I've got to say, I, I, I've I become a massive, massive fan of Jacob Mendy this season. Um, yep. You know, the He's playing on the wrong in his wrong position. He's on the, the opposite side. He's on the right right hand side. And he's just been fantastic. That goal he scored uh, last week, superb. Oh. And you know, I, I think I think there's probably uh, when Ryan Barnett comes back, I would argue that there's there's a case to be made for Mendy playing ahead of uh, James McLean. To be honest, um, you know, I really do. I, I I think a lot of people would disagree with me on that. Uh, nothing new there, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I I genuinely uh, I, I genuinely do. I, I really rate it. I think the difference between him and McLean is. Uh, Mendy, Mendy frightens the life out of opposing defenders. Okay, it's James McLean's better defender. Uh, James McLean's probably got a better delivery as well, I'd imagine. I um, can't remember where yeah. I saw this stat, but Mendy is apparently the fastest runner across all five leagues from National League to Premier League. He is like scarily uh, fast. <laughs> scary mm. fast. 
M- like, Mendy's been incredible. Well, like it, it, he's such a, he's just this speed, his his awareness. Yeah, okay, he's had some slip ups, and unfortunately, you know, fucking social media, being social media, just gets toxic as shit the minute stuff hits the fan. But like, he, other than the one or two slip ups, he's he's been consistent as well. And I think you've you've nailed the nailed it on the head when you say he probably does have a case ahead of ahead of McLean, especially when um, Barnett comes back. Bendy's goal, like you said, on the weekend, um, I think, what's his name, Vinicius Jr. from Real Madrid did the same goal, the same goal, like the same thing, and he's getting plaudits. Vinny's, the, oh, he's God, he's going to be going to give him the Ballon d'Or or whatever. I'm telling you what, Mendy, if you do that at the Stoke Carras in the fucking two degrees, just you do that and and then, then come back to me because he's doing it in sunny Spain. Do it in the the middle of a, a wet race course and come back to me because that that shit was was my probably my goal of the season. <laughs> I think you've you've raised a really important point there, mate, as well. Just when will the media start to take notice of Wrexham? We don't yeah. get any media. No, no whatsoever. attention, <laughs> none at all. We get fucking no, but, nothing. <laughs> no, honestly, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, mate. I completely agree with you. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's that's how it works, isn't it? Sometimes when the top players do something, uh, you know, oh, they're, they're the greatest player of all time. Then someone does it at a lower level. No one really pays any attention. But, no, Jacob Mendy's been outstanding, though. Um, I, and I do think he's a confidence player. Uh, mm. You know, it, it can't help him when he's got lad, you know people on his back and stuff like that, which thankfully hasn't happened this season. Uh, but you talk about consistency there, mate. And, you know, I think he's added that to his game this year. Last last year, you know, it was literally like a lottery. What, Jake, what you know, which Mendy turns up today? Was it, the you know, the one that looks like he's a competition winner or the one who looks like he could play for Brazil in 1970? You know what I mean? You yeah. don't know which one's going to turn up. But, um, yeah, I really, really do like Mendy, though. And he's a really humble guy as well. And, uh, so you went out to the you went out to the States for the, the pre-season friendlies. Um, where would you like to see some preseason friendlies played, if you had the choice? Oh, I tell you what. And then, secondly, if you see Rob and Ryan, can you tell them to send the boys down to Australia to play some A League sides? Perfect. Oh but, fuck! I was going to say I, I didn't re- I didn't realize straight away, but now I do realize that you're uh, you're setting me up to say like uh, you know Perth or Brisbane or Sydney or something. <laughs> uh, but, no, 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 but. I don't care if you if you say fucking what what's it um, fingering ho in bloody Scotland or something. <laughs> Actually, that's a proper name. Look it up. Oh, I, I, I weirdly I know, yeah. weirdly I know that. <laughs> go, go go play on a cold Friday night in Ballend or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the names, but well, it's it's that's. That's a good. Well, I know you. I'm going to let you answer that question, actually. But before you do, w- April Fools this year, um, Central Coast Mariners, who's a team up in, uh, well, in the Central Coast in uh, New South Wales, so you know, uh, more regional part of you know, outside of Newcastle that way. They'd hate me saying that because they're enemies. But anyways, they're around that way, and they posted on April Fools that Rexon were coming down for some friendlies in April, and I, I, fuck, I am so so thick i was like oh my god it's happening it's happening like i'm gonna get my flights i'm ready to book the domestic flights i'm like it's gonna be this great thing and here's the thing a lot of people believed it but i'll commend them um for for doing that but uh ever since then i've now got it hell-bent against anyone i want if they come to australia they can't play central coast because they fucked me over and they, they can play everyone else they can play melbourne city they can play perth glory i don't give a shit just don't you dare play Central Coast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair comment, mate, in all fairness. But um, yeah, I, I don't know really. I mean, in terms of where to go, I mean, I, I've never been to Australia, so I'd absolutely love to go to Australia. Um, fingers crossed and find someone to pay for me, um, but because that's not happening otherwise. But uh, no, I'll... Uh, you can stay yeah. with us, mate. That, 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 that saves that little yeah. hassle, so... Yeah, you go. Well, that, that's that's what I was hinting towards. So yeah, thanks yeah, for that. Mate. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. We it's, got it's you. Not a, it's not a. It's definitely not a cheap trip to come come down all this way. But uh, no, it's hey, what? Well, it's a, it's a hell of a country. It is a hell of a country, yeah. and uh, oh, no, we we I've have always a bunch of passionate blokes. And we, we'll yeah. take you to a pub. 
and and you I can just realise I'm wearing have Australia a classic Australian schnitty. <laughs> Shitty uh, shit. I, I, I'd absolutely love to go on a straight and you know, if Rex were playing there as well, that'd just be absolutely awesome. Um, I've always wanted to go to Argentina, um, as well, to be honest. That would be that would be amazing. Uh, Rex and V Boca Juniors at the La Bomba, that'd be something else. That would, um, <laughs> also a bit of a one from left field, uh, Iceland as well. Iceland, quite, ah, quite that could probably yeah, happen. <laughs> <laughs> like like very soon yeah. like that would be I don't know like I know a lot of the Scottish sides when they when they go off on their preseason camps you know going to fucking Norway Iceland like you know all that that'd be that'd be pretty cool uh I definitely yeah look to do a round trip if, if it led into a week one um and then I could do Iceland go to that and then go to the race course the following week would be pretty good um speaking of the the Argentina one uh and Boca Juniors. That's obviously would be fucking mental because of the fan base and just how crazy it has. Fan base in in terms of what we see is a little bit different than what you see in terms of Rex. Well, obviously, we're seeing a internet uh, look at it. You know, we're looking at half a million people, million people who are all over the globe. What's it been like in Wrexham? Obviously, this season, I know a lot of, I've seen a lot of um, our mates uh, have gone across. I know Ran has gone across with his wife. Um, I know that a couple of others have gone too. What's the tourism been like? Has it been gangbusters or is it just what we see on Twitter? Well, for the start, um, you know, if you just judge it by the turf. Um, you know, every time I speak to Wayne, like, you know, he said, oh, we just had another mini bus of Americans just pull up now. And he said, every single day, uh, there'll be international visitors, usually Americans, to be honest, uh, yeah. but people from all over. I've spoken spoken to a few Aussies over there as well. Um, wow. Yeah, and uh, you know, th- th- yeah. If you if you judge it by the turf, it is incredible how many people are visiting every day. Even if you know, even on a day that's like maybe seven days away from a match day, the turf will have people there. Uh, you know, buying the merch and uh, you know having selfies with Wayne, who just looks bemused by it all, like he always does. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 great. It is fantastic. I I live um, in a town called Denby, uh, twenty five miles away. Um, so, in terms, of, there's been a massive, massive boost uh, in terms of the Wrexham area with you know young kids running around wearing Wrexham shirts, whereas they may in the past have wore Liverpool, Man United. Well, now everyone wants to be Paul Mullin. All the kids in the playground want to be Paul Mullin, which is fantastic to see. But even in my area and, and further west. Um, you know, towards Anglesey, Gwynedd, that area. Uh, traditionally, um, you know, a few always had a few Wrexham fans in those areas, but now it has just exploded um, to the point where, you know, people are traveling. People have got season tickets and they live like 120 miles away. You know, so it's it's absolutely yeah. great. Um, but I, I do have to pinch myself, lads. I've I've got to tell you because, um, you know, I've I've been been at the race course some nights where. Christ, you know, if I wanted to speak to the, the oh. person sat next to me, I'd have to shout. But um, if you, you know, have to pinch uh, anything, mate, honestly, just pinch Elliot Lee's cheeks, please, for me. <laughs> His I obsession is getting a bit unhealthy. Oh. Um, it's, it's especially, I don't know if, if, you, if you remember him, the pinch him on the, just give him a slap on the cheek, pinch on the cheek, whatever. Just say that was from Rousey from Two Beards. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he's. He needs it. It just—it's just something that it's on the bucket list for sure. Again, another reason why will we be—we will be banned from Wrexham the minute we step into the place. But the that <laughs> I, can't, I can't even like that. Just the thought of that, Rousey, is just—I can't get it out of my head. I'll do it um, myself, but I can't fucking get there. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking. It's like twenty grand for two people to go across. It's like fucked up. Like it's just cooked from Australia at the moment. But that's that's a whole other story. But the. Do you remember that photo that was went around of Elliot Lee, you know, getting a little bit overexcited during a celebration that you could see uh, just kind of flagpoling? Um, did Did you see that photo going around, Tommy? I can't. I can't think to be honest. I may. I, I mean, I must have seen it, but it doesn't jump to my mind. Really. That one there. He's popped it up. Um, <laughs> It's just the crotch. Why didn't you just do the crotch? You couldn't just pick like the fucking photo. You had to zoom in. <laughs> wow. Anyways, that that's on his brain all the time. So that's just I, running. Just say, I get the impression that he uh, he does look at that photo quite a lot in his spare time as well. I'd imagine. 
<laughs> spare time, any time. Just uh, like you know, if there's a if there is a time, if there, if 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 time is a man made construct, which it is, and you know he's he's looking at that photo, he's he's sent it to. You know what? I have to stop fucking like showing my phone. I'm one of those people who has to do. I want to get one of those privacy screen protectors purely since knowing Rousey, because he'll just send me photos like that, just middle of my shift. Like I work in an office, work for like a brand, like branding company. Anyways, and. I'm sitting there like, oh, maybe, you know, oh, it's an image. Oh, I'll have a look. Click. And it's just Elliot Lee's just dong right in my face. And I'm just like, mate, like, oh, can you just stop? <laughs> but that's that's us. So we are very different when it comes to the other podcasts, I feel, in the sense that um, we cross boundaries that will get us cancelled. We're just hoping we get cancelled after we get to Wrexham. Then we're okay. And then, you know, what happens, happens. But we just got to hold Rousey off until then. Um, but, but speaking of fucked up things, um, wh- well, hey, what- it's become a thing in in the fuckhead chat now. So the no. fuckhead program is our own our own little fans program that we've it's like got. only fans, but for bearded people, people. pay five dollars a month to to have access to. But um, whenever Elliot Lee scores now, it's like get your lees out, and everyone just posts that. It's just like that picture just over and over again. But why do people have it so readily available? <laughs> like it's like, is it saved on the desktop? Just drag and drop, and we're good. Like yeah. you know, is that is that what it's like? <laughs> but what 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 I wanted to what is going into my weird ass fucking segue is what has been some of the we talked about um i saw a tweet i think it was by fearless or it might have been rob ryan red who said you know what was like the worst cancellation of a game you know that you've seen or like you know what was the weirdest kind of circumstance i guess what on the long lines of that what was been the weirdest kind of thing you've witnessed at a wrexham game if you can think of any whether it be you know game being called off because of you know whatever any anything come to mind do you know what it's really difficult and and the uh the guys from men in blazers uh you know the americans they they sort of uh they they ask me like or, or they say oh you know you should uh, you should film like this this and that and and i'm like what is that interesting because the thing is in wrexham because wrexham's such a mad place like you just become desensitized to nonsense so like <laughs> So, like, something that I would think was probably quite ordinary would be, like, mental to someone yeah. from, like, America or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's no, really that explains straight, yeah. why we haven't been cancelled yet. <laughs> yeah, everyone's desensitised, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, though. Yeah, I think it's going to be the slide, though, mate. The naked slide. That's going to be the one that... Uh, straw that, that that's the Fuck, that's going to be... Yeah, I mean, at least, you know, maybe... As long as it's you not could cl- cold, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's going to be cold. I think. I think for us Australians, doesn't matter what time we're going to go, it's going to be cold. Um, you know, the heat wave that happened for you guys. You know, we during we were interviewing Mark Griffiths at the time, and it was during like the he- heat wave for a warmer couple of days. And we were like, you know, how hot was it? And I think he was mentioning like off air, it was like you know thirty, thirty one, something like the thirty two. Might have been a little bit hotter than that. But for Rousey, who's just like on the middle of the fucking sun, um, where it's like, what is it? What 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 did you have yesterday? Forty uh, degrees yesterday? Yeah, yeah. No, yesterday was thirty eight, so it was a little bit cooler. A little bit cooler. Um, we're Reason, in the middle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the problem is with WA, it's different where Adrian's from Adelaide because you have like four seasons in one day. Um, mm. In in Australia, it's just either hot or raining, and. Um, if it's hot, it's fucking hot. And we had it, I think coming into Christmas, we've got another heat wave planned and we're, they reckon it's oh. going to be four days over 42 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. It'd be bloody brutal, but hey, it, it's I mean, one of the things you have to accept. <laughs> in in the UK, like, um, you know, if, if the temperature goes above like 29, 30, they shut all the schools and tell people to stay in their homes. So, do you know, like, 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 that's it. it. <laughs> but I yeah. can see the I can see the opposite happening here. Like, if it gets below, I don't know. Let's say it goes into the minus degrees. I don't. I don't. I, in my lifetime, I don't remember it getting that cold. At least where I've lived, um, maybe maybe zero. But I don't think I've gone below that. But 
that's just the regular. And I reckon I'd freeze my tits off. Like, I don't think I could, I could, nah, I just couldn't hack it. And it sucks because obviously, you know, it's made fun of um, a lot. You know, it's a winter sport. You know, it's good. You got to toughen up. You got to understand it. But us Aussies, the A League is played now, which is summer months. Like they play over the Christ- Christmas break as well. Summer, peak summer. Games are only called off, I think, if it's over 38 or 37.5, um, which. Again, I would the, the opposite. I reckon would happen. I reckon if it got below zero, it, they'd cancel the game. Whereas, in like you said, desensitized, we are the same idea for you. You, you. you, well, okay, it's minus two. Who gives a shit? Like, <laughs> and, and what was been the coldest? I guess uh, game that you can remember down at the race course. Oh, do you know what? Any game where I've been sat in the mold road stand. Honest to God, I'm not lying, lads. When you come over here, you two. Don't go in the mold road stand. You'll freeze <laughs> to death. E- even in the middle of August, I'm not even joking. I've known it to be a, like quite a nice su- sunny day, um, you know, maybe 23, 24 degrees. And you'd need a hat and gloves in the, in the mold road. For some reason, it's got its own microclimate. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any dis- any sense whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, no, there's been, there's been loads of... Um, I remember in the 90s playing West Ham. Uh, in the FA Cup and uh, there was snow all over the pitch. They had to use an orange ball. And, um, you know, West Ham had a player called uh, Hugo Porfirio, I think his name was, Portuguese international. Uh, and Harry Redknapp said after the game, oh, he'd never seen snow in his life. Oh. And then he's, he's making his debut at the race course on a snow-covered pitch. Like So, yeah, that was a, that was a mad one. Would you, um, um, yeah. would you go into the temporary cop by any chance? And by the way, how does it look? Is it because obviously you might have seen it? Have you, does it look good? <laughs> I, I, to be honest, lads, I haven't been uh, into town for um, when was the last time I was there last week. So uh, I, you know, I know as much as uh, as you guys there, and for just what I've seen on Twitter, um, it, it does seem odd, doesn't it? Like, sort of think, why didn't they do this ages ago? But you know what I mean. It's it is going to be good to have more fans in the ground. Um, but yeah, just just in terms of uh, you know. Having that those two thousand extra fans there, and and you know, it's it's just important that as many people as possible can get a ticket now, isn't it? So, um, you know, I, I, so many of my friends who've been going for years, but unfortunately for whatever reason can't couldn't afford a season ticket or you know work commitments, whatever. Um, you know, I, I feel for them because it's it's it is tough to get a ticket now and things, but you know, it, it's great at the same time because it means the club's growing. So. Uh, let's just hope that we get that cop open, though, because that's we desperately need that cop. Do you reckon that might have been a Robin Ryan directive? Maybe they even pulled the money out for it themselves. Yeah, quite possibly. You know, I, I could well imagine. Um, you know, it's it probably makes business sense as well. I'd have thought. Mm. Um, well, you know, Sean cause... Harvey, Sean Harvey, a couple months back actually said um, they're not they're not going to do a temporary stand because it doesn't make financial sense. So it that leads me to believe that maybe Rob and Ryan have actually gone in and said, "Oi, uh, here's the cash." Or they've it made done. it, <laughs> or they've made it make financial sense. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, because t- I mean, I'm we're talking ticket prices. We're talking um, the merch that people will probably get buy when they're there. Um, food and drink. I don't know if they're adding anything extra because of it or not, but maybe that could be could be added. But I don't know. I, I I don't see it losing money. I know everyone's saying it's, you know, they're going to cop a loss, but I don't know. I just don't see it losing money because you're going to get, well, it'll be consistently sold out. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and secondly, it, it, if, you know, the local, it's just going to pump money into the community as well. So even if they do lose money for the club, the town itself's not losing anything. So if anything, hopefully it proves a point that, hey, government you fucked up by not giving us the funding <laughs> um you know look what we just did with a temporary stand imagine what we could have done with a cop you know at the end of this year but no nah, not not to be and the the i guess the other one is uh with the stand that's gone gone up that's gonna obviously pump it in with do you think that delays Everything because they put it up pretty quick. I would imagine they'd take it down pretty quick, so it probably wouldn't affect the timing. But I've been reading a fair bit that that's a sign that we're going to be delayed even more. Is that your thought? Yeah, I I, I had the, the same thought. I, I can't pretend to be uh, you know any more in the know than you guys in, in all fairness. Yeah. But um, you know, it's um, 
that, that was my first thought. I thought, right, so the, the, it feels like this cop's even further away now. I mean, we, we know that August is is dead in the water. That's that's definitely not happening. Um, yeah. You know, that was the original date, wasn't it? August coming up, um, you know, August next year. That's not going to happen. Um, I suspect, well, let's hope it's ready for the August after at this point, I think. Um, it's not When ideal. we're in the it's championship, not- right? Well, I mean, yeah, how good, <laughs> be amazing, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, that's the dream, mate. That's the dream right there. But um, uh, this this two thousand, you know, t- it's two thousand extra seats. You know, I don't know. I, I suspect there's not going to be a roof on it on anything, is there? So, you know, it's it's not going to be probably the nicest place to to watch a game in the middle of winter. But you know, it, it's still people. It is uh, what it is. You know, yeah, exactly. And people are desperate for a ticket. So uh, I'm glad they've been proactive, though. Uh, it is good because. Uh, you know, the amount of fans who just can't get in at the moment, um, it definitely makes sense to do it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I mean, cause we see it, we see it all the time with, with, you know, a lot of people whinging and complaining that they can't get tickets or the, you know, the ticket system doesn't work or the queue system that they had doesn't work. And, you know, I think this is a, obviously a good opportunity to the, you know, if we can still sell out every single one of those seats, and I just think if you're really that passionate of a Wrexham fan, you're not going to give a shit where you sit. I mean, fuck. Mm. Like, you just want to see them play. And I mean, I would move the ends of the world just to see those boys play in, in real time, you know? And um, it, it's it's one of those things that, you know, you're really passionate about. Who gives a fuck if you're going to be cold for a couple of hours, you know? Put an extra layer on, wear some thermals or some bullshit. Frostbite is only temporary, right? Like, you know, like it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. But no, but like, it's a good point because imagine traveling all that way and you're like going to be picky about a seat, right? Like I'm talking more talking towards the international fans, I guess, but like you travel all that way, you you know, you got there, you just take whatever you can get. Like I'd fucking sit. If I, I literally would always joke, like even if they left that mound of dirt, where the cop was, I just sit on that. I don't give a shit. Like, you know, just pop, pop me, pop me at the race course. I just want to be a part of it. Um, and I think that that seems to be the sentiment from, from everyone, which is good because anyone who's going to be picky about it uh, probably shouldn't be going really. Um, but that, that's another one is the 75 international tickets that go for members. You know, I'm a, I'm a member. I don't know what that means, really. <laughs> just I pay money, and if I was to go this year, I can go. If not, I think I get an email saying, "Dear recipient, happy birthday." You know, like whatever it might be. Um, but uh, you know, it's worth 175 bucks or whatever it is in Australian dollars. <laughs> but it, it's it's good. Do you think that the when the cops built that shuffles things around a bit because I was thinking about this the other day, like obviously season ticket holders might go, Oh, well, that's a nice stand. I don't want to sit in the mold road stand. I want to sit at the cop. Is that something that you foresee happening? And do you think, is that something the club does? I, I'm not familiar with it. Um, my local club for footy AFL um, uh, in the Aussie rules, Geelong, um, I'm a season ticket holder for them. And when they put a new stand in, there was a lot of shuffle around, but there was a wait list. Um, is that the same at Wrexham? It's, I tell you, it's going to cause a bit of chaos, I would suspect, because, um, you know, pretty much everyone I've spoken to, uh, especially in the tech end and, and what have you, um, I think mold rolled people are quite uh, quite loyal. They're, they're quite uh, hardy souls. They, they like having the frostbite, uh, you know, between <laughs> August and May. But, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it really is going to cause a few issues because there are going to be so many people wanting to go in that cop. Um, I suppose it'd just be first come, first serve. But, uh, you know, existing season ticket holders will probably have first refusal, I'd imagine. That's how it'll be done. And, um, yeah, it'd be a bit of a scramble after that, I think. But, um, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm definitely hoping to get a season ticket in the, um, uh, yeah, in the new cop. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely gutted. The worst mistake I made was when I got the job as a journalist was uh, giving up my season ticket, not renewing it. And, uh yeah, the demand just went through the roof. I should have known, really. But um, yeah, worst decision I ever made. Shocking. Hard prediction, you get, though, mate. You, you still Hard prediction. You got a season ticket now, or I haven't. No, I just um, thankfully I've got a mate who's going to um, lend me his to the end of the season. He can't make uh, can't make any games till next August. So, uh, so yeah, I'm quite lucky with that. Uh, so I am sorted. But uh, but yeah, away games are a bit of a scramble week by week. <laughs> ah, fair enough. 
That's all I'd right. Try, I'd, rather scr- I'd rather scramble for a ticket and you know s- sit amongst the atmosphere and uh, have a few beers with the lads than than sitting on my laptop anyway. So it's all good. <laughs> way better that way. Yeah. No. Nah. Well, look, and you couldn't have predicted it, mate. Like again, everyone's talked about it to death. You know. Oh God, it's you know it's been the like no one predicted. You know, Hollywood owners, what's happened, the players we've got, the club that was now you know built the infrastructure, even just down to like. CFOs, CEOs, all of the all of the above is just beyond any belief. I'm sure what you, everyone, Wrexham local or not, could believe in. What I'm interested to see is where the ceiling is, um, because I know that it's you know it's no shock horror that every owner wants to be in the Premier League, um, and Rob's been pretty open about you know I'd love to just get to the Championship right now. I mean, I'm on a bit of a high of how well we're doing right now. So it's like, great, awesome. Well, you know, we could probably do it. Does what happened at Luton give you hope that we could do something similar? Or do you think it's a different scenario? I think you've got to take hope from from stories like that. Um, you know, Luton, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't feel that long ago. Uh, coming out of Kenilworth Road, absolutely gutted because they beat us in the playoff semi-final. You know, it's... Um, I think it's what was it eleven years now? Yeah, I think it's eleven years. But wow. uh, feels like yesterday. And now they're in the Premier League. You know, it's it's crazy. And that's but that's how quickly. As soon as you're on a certain trajectory, and we are on the right path, I believe. You know, we're on the way up. Um, you know, for me, it's a question of when we'll get to League One, uh, not if. So you know, I'm not going to. You know, I I think it, I think it will be this year. Personally, uh, if you. Gun to the head, uh, asking me to predict. I'd say, yeah, we're going to go up this year. But even if we don't, I think we'll go up next year. I, I am that confident. We're going in the right direction. When we get to League One, that's that's going to be really tough because there's some big, big clubs and big spending clubs as well. Um, you sort of you move on to a different level of spending there. I mean, you know, we, we'd be absolutely able to hold our own now. I'm, I'm really confident of that I think we'd be a mid-table League One team now. But if you want to sort of get into the championship, that's that's going to take either luck or big investment, um, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that, it's just going to be really interesting. I'm just so excited, though. I mean, uh, you know, I always uh, always joke with people and you know, sort of say, "Do you remember the time where uh, you know I think we were like 19th in League One, and you know, everyone was uh, chatting, we want Flynn out." And you're thinking, "How spoiled were we back then?" Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's. Um, yeah, it's just great to see that the, the club's back on the way to where, well, I think we all think uh, we belong, the championship. That's it. That's <laughs> it, mate. That's it. Fuck. I just, it's what dreams are made of, mate. And it's something that uh, I'm, I'm excited. I've got a new theory that just been floating around. Um, obviously, Hugh Jackman's been in the UK filming for, I think, for Deadpool, I want to say. Um, that's been happening. And obviously, he's made no no secret. He's gone to the race course. He wears his Wrexham hat in every fucking photo, just like Ryan does. Um, my new theory is what like he has nothing to gain from wearing that hat every day. <laughs> like he has not. Like I mean, I'm pretty sure he's been an open Norwich fan um, for years prior, and I think it was just because they were green and gold, and that was the Aussie the Aussie colours. So maybe that that's a, maybe another thing. But I new theory is. The boys are looking at new investors, Alpine, for example. They've gone and done that. I guarantee those fuckers don't like F1. <laughs> they, they don't like F1, but they want to make them rich friends that they can go, hey, did you know we can, you know, sponsorship, whatever it might be, get the funding that we need to handle our own. Do you think that's what's happening or do you, or is it just a far-fetched dream? Well, no, I, I think it's a real possibility. I think, we, you know, it will take a bit of extra investment. You know, I know we're very lucky to have uh, Ryan and Rob and, and they're, you know, they're very rich. Obviously, Ryan a bit more so than Rob. But, uh, you know, it, but you've got to be realistic and say he's not going to spend half of his, uh, you know, of his money on Wrexham. So we are going to need a little bit more investment, I think, if we want to, I think to get the championship, I, I do think we might need, uh, you know, someone, It'd be fantastic if it's Hugh Jackman. I quite like yeah. Hugh Jackman. He's still happy, but um, yeah, that'd be great. And um, you know, I, th- I think they've got friends in high places, though. So I'd like to think that with their connections, they'd be uh, they'd be yeah. able to entice 
able to. I think the key for me, though, lads, I've got to say is, um, you know, I think the how long the documentary lasts for because, you know, mm. there will be there will be a, a certain element of of people who have started to follow the club's journey now, who, as soon as the cameras turn off, they'll turn off. They they probably like lose a bit of interest and forget about it. You know, that's how it happens, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I remember when everyone was into Squid Game and then everyone forgot about it two weeks later. But you know, wreck some squids. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I don't think. Um, uh, I don't see them having to struggle. I mean, as long as they keep that same feel that they've got, that same locker room that they've got, maybe not so much the same players, but that same camaraderie between the players where the, the club is a family. It's And it's more than just, you know, two goalposts at the end. Um, you know, they, I, I think they, you know, investment-wise, they probably won't need to go too far for that investment. I mean, they've probably already yeah. got things in place knowing how clever... Um, Ryan Reynolds is. I mean, he. They've already to, bought. They've already bought the new shirts to, for League One. Like, yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, you know, and and you like, so so. I don't think they're going to be struggling for investment, and nah. I don't think they're going to have to suck off a Saudi just to get some money. You know, so no. Um, I love how you say yeah. that because that's the one thing that they can't say in that country, or you will die. So <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Come I don't me, know Saudis. if they they don't take that payment again. Um, we probably have to stop over in like, Dubai. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Wow, Dubai probably over there. So you'll be banned. You won't even be banned before you even enter Wrexham. You're just not going to get on the next flight. It's just end game for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, don't, I wouldn't try. I wouldn't try the naked slide in uh, Saudi Arabia, mate. That's my advice. Anyway, that sounds like God. a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if the if like a I don't know what is it Al Nasir. Welcome to Al Nasir documentary would hit as hard as Welcome to Wrexham, you know? Like, I don't know if it'd have the same community vibe, but who knows? Maybe it does. Who knows? But um, all these Al Nasir fans are in the comments just like, fuck you, Ronaldo's God. Um, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but I, I like I like what you're saying, though. It is There will be an end to Welcome to Wrexham. That, that's just, it's not going to, like, shows have an end. Everything has an end. Um, the club doesn't, <laughs> fingers crossed, but, you know, the show will. Um, and you're right. It is the eyeballs that we can get on it and get as many as we can while we can. Um, so, you know, getting promotion each year definitely helps that um, because it creates more content, more whichever. But I think you're right. You know, when we get into a maybe a stagnant championship, maybe leg one mid table and things get a bit same old, same old. I'm sure they'll have to probably pull the plug on the show, but I'm hoping we'd get those investors in. Like you said, Rousey, they've probably got them in place already. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Tommy, mate, it's been, it's been, great. It's been so good having you on, mate. And, and, and really, really appreciate you spending some time with us. I mean, your, 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 you know, Christmas present to Adrian. And, uh, I gotta admit, you know, I love your content. So, um, you know, for you, for, for you to come on and, and bless some, <laughs> a, a lesser known Aussie, Aussie podcast, <laughs> so, um, for you to come on and, 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 you know, bless us with your presence like that. It's, it's, it's really appreciated. Um, yeah. And I, I can't thank you enough. And I know, I know Adrian, he's, he's over the moon of you coming on. So we hope to do it, this again sometime. I really, I really <laughs> fear for poor Tommy. He's like, fuck, I'm going to have to worry. If I see a bald ginger down the street, I'm going to have to fucking run because, like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's just like, as I mentioned, you know, your journalistic work has been something that's really engaged me through Rex and when it was hard was hard to, to get that content. And I learned about things like, you know, the pods and, you know, seeing you, you know, doing like you'd see an interview on the Rexa website and you just see you there with your, your little mic or tape recorder, whatever it might be. And I'd see you there and I'm like, oh, that's Tommy. Like it is one of those surreal things that we get to chat with you. So I really appreciate it, mate. And um, look, when, when you, when we get down there, we, uh, we owe you a couple of pints. That's for sure. <laughs> Oh, no, the pints are going to be on me, me lads, I tell you, because uh, as long as it's in the turf, I don't want to go to the fat boy. It's a bit more expensive there. I'm not buying ah. it. Uh, <laughs> Rich, I just I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rich, Rich knows the score anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, lads, that's really kind of you to say what you've said there. And it genuinely means the world because, um, 
you know, I, I, I'm very lucky to have been able to do what I've done the last couple of years. And what I'm doing now with Men and Blazers is absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, the fact that uh, Wrexham fans seem to be enjoying it at the moment um, is is absolutely amazing. And also, lads, just keep it going with this pod because it's great to see just the support we get from all over the world. And, you know, I, and I don't mean this condescendingly, but what has surprised me is the depth of knowledge of our international fans. Like you, you guys, you know, you know as much as anyone in Wrexham, if not more. You know, it's 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 fantastic. Uh, and it's the same as some of the guys I've spoken to in America. And, you know, it, it blows my mind, really, that, like, the, the in-depth knowledge they've got about, like, um, you know, Elliot Lee's favourite crisps and stuff like that. You know, it's just incredible. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's, it's the crazy yeah, He time. knows a lot about Elliot Lee and a lot yeah. of his private business. So <laughs> you can definitely count on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, lads, hey. Keep keep uh, keep up the good work, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely have a beer when you're over. Oh, for sure, for nice. sure. So, guys, um, thank you, Tommy, for coming on. And guys, we will wrap things up for this really long chin wag episode, but well and truly worth it. We'll wrap things up right after this, so stay tuned. Let's go. So that was Tommy Kaus. Kaus in Welsh means cheese. But, uh, mate. The cheese a, man. Oh, mate. What a fucking legend. What a legend. I, I really enjoyed that episode. Um, I see what you see in him now, Adrian. That He's just a fantastic guy. <laughs> You're so. acting like I'm poor, like poor bastard's got a fucking, I've got a poster of fucking the Tommy Cheese up in the <laughs> <laughs> in the bedroom or some shit. No, just look, I like I've told Rouse and I'll tell the viewers as well. You know, I've admired this bloke from afar in terms of his journalistic work. And, you know, I always talk about like my dream job and what I would love to do and how I'd like to be in that role. He kind of epitomizes that. And and to have him on just it means a lot to to me. And again, Rousey, thank you for making the surprise and 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 getting getting him on because yeah, it means a lot. Um I'm just I'll reiterate what he uh, has said, and I'm pretty sure he said it on the pod, but he also said it off air. We're very lucky in Wrexham or in in the Wrexham community that we have people that are willing to talk to us. Um, I see a lot of people who are international fans of, <clears throat> you know, maybe they're the fans of the big six. Um, maybe they're fans of, you know, a championship club and they're from international. They're not as adopted as, as we are. Um, we're very lucky to be, brought under the wing and Tommy again has done that for us. So mate, appreciate you. Rousey again, getting him on means the world. Um, that's not to discount any other guest we've ever had on. I've loved every guest we've had on. Um, I think I was just, it was more, more of a surprise today. So I appreciate it, Rousey. And um, fuck, I don't know if I made a fool of myself. I'm, I'm, I'll debrief with you after this, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I think you did fine. So guys, if you like this episode, be sure to share the shit out of it. Subscribe, give us a like. It helps us on our road to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. That will be an absolute uh, absolute godsend if we're able to get that. So please help us out. One day. Like, share, subscribe. And if you want to become a fuckhead, $5 a month, link is in the description down below. And uh, I am your host, Rousey, Adrian. Good luck in Japan, mate. Safe travels, and uh, we'll see you. I'll see you on the next in the on the flip side in twenty twenty four. So mate. let's go, guys. Enjoy, we will mate. have two episodes airing. It's just going to be like it's we're we're constantly here. So don't you we're worry. never We're never leaving not going you anywhere. <laughs> so we'll see you next week for another special episode on Two Beards, a podcast, and Rex and AFC. Let's fucking go up the town <laughs>